Hi, I'm Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to be working with an iPhone and that little keyboard. I've come up with eight basic things that I think everybody should know about using that keyboard. The first thing you need to know is how do you make the keyboard appear? Here I am on an iPhone's home screen and there's no keyboard. But as soon as I tap on something that expects you to type, you tap where you want to type, the keyboard appears. But then what if you want to see something that's down here, that's underneath the keyboard? Can we make it disappear? Yes, you just touch in the middle of the screen and swipe down and it disappears. How do you bring it back? Tap where you're supposed to type and it comes back. Number two, do you type by tapping or by sliding? Tapping, I mean, here I am in search and I want to search for restaurant recommendations near me. So I tap on each letter and some people do that with their thumbs, but I've just, I've never learned how to do it with my thumbs and you'll see why in a minute. Restaurant recommendations. And I'm lazy and didn't spell it with the two M's, but it doesn't care near me. All right, so that is tapping, but I much prefer, so I'm going to show you sliding. I tap the X to get rid of all that, and instead of tap, 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 I touch the R, rub to the E, S, T, A, U, R, A, N, T, and it will always pull up of the real word, R-E-C-O-M-E-N-D-A-T-I-O-N-S, and notice it did the double M for me. And it's putting a space. So I just find that so much faster than, than the tapping. When I search, I will get the restaurant recommendations. Number three, keyboard settings. If you go out to your home screen and go into settings, then general, then keyboard. Perhaps when you tried to slide across the letters, it didn't work. That would be because the setting for slide to type may have been off on yours. So here is where all the settings are that control your keyboard. Number four, dictating. Let's say I want to make an email. I use the Gmail app, compose. I'm tired of typing, I want to talk. You just tap the microphone icon. Hi Mary, I'm so looking forward to your visit. Have you made your plane reservations yet? Question mark. I hope you'll have time to go to Zoo Miami. It's such a fun place, period. I have it planned for Thursday the 8th. See you later, Chris. Notice when I was done, I tapped the little keyboard icon to take it out of voice and back into keyboard. Number five, making corrections. Always read over a message that was entered on a smartphone. You never know what autocorrect is going to do. I actually don't see any errors, but I do see some things I want to change. After Hi Mary, I want a new line. Now you can just tap there to add it, but sometimes that's hard. So how do you position the cursor exactly? Well, if you long press, notice that the cursor gets kind of attached to my finger and I can drag it and drop it wherever I want and that's where I'll put the return. You can also just tap anywhere and if you long press on the space bar, the keyboard turns into like a mouse and you can position that wherever you want. I want to turn that word into a number. You tap on the numbers and tap the eighth. And if you do see a word that autocorrect mangled, it's easy to just tap on the word. Like, let's see what zoo. What if I had meant to say zoom? Well, you just tap on the word and the other options that autocorrect have appear and you just tap on it. 
my name could be Christmas. So you just tap on the word that needs changing and hopefully the correct one will be in that list. Number six, shortcut for numbers and punctuation. You probably noticed that when I wanted to type a number, I had to tap on the number sign, then tap the number, then go back to the characters. Here is the shortcut. If you just long press on the one, two, three, and drag it up to the eight, then let go, notice it temporarily turned the number keyboard on and then turned it back. The same thing works with punctuation and with capital letters. So I want to add a PS. Now it starts off with a capital P. Now I need a period. Long press on the one, two, three, go to period. Now I want a capital S. Hold down on the shift, go over to the S and let go. Hold down on the one, two, three, over to the period and let go. And just a reminder comma, you owe $85 for your portion. Number seven, making text bold, italic, or underline. Step one is you must select the text that you want to do. You double tap to select a word, and then if you want to extend the selection, you drag the little handle over. With an item selected, you should see this BIU. Now, this doesn't work in the text messaging app, however. I am in email, so BIU, I can make it bold, italic, and underline. How's that? Number eight, an emoji. The, to get the emoji keyboard, it's this globe icon here. Long press on it and scroll up till you see emoji. And there's all sorts of them. You can even search. So if I wanted something for money, there. So a face and a search. And I especially like the thumbs up and ones that you use all the time will appear up in that top row. And that is the eight things I think everybody should know about their iPhone keyboard.